As we wrap up this mini-series and I try to reach a balanced conclusion on the whole thing, there are three reactions that I think we should guard against. The first reaction I think we should guard against is the demonization of all music. I received a message quite early on in this series saying, you need to tell people that all music and all art is evil. Even Christian music, that's a deception. Some people think that Christian music is okay, but you need to tell people that it's all bad and to stay away from all of it. All music, all art. And I'm not going to do that. It sounds a bit like the Taliban trying to ban people from listening to all music. I don't think that's a balanced or healthy conclusion to reach, and it's certainly not a biblical conclusion to reach, to live in fear that all music is filled with pollution and evil. I don't know how many people would have that view anyway, but I just really hope that I haven't given anyone the impression that I think that way and that I'm against all music. I merely just wanted to highlight some of the pitfalls that I have personally encountered in this area as I've tried to navigate and traverse this part of life. But fundamentally, I've got to say that music is good. Of course it is. Music is a gift from God, as is art and creativity. Yes, it can be subverted for evil, but that doesn't make it intrinsically bad. Far from it. Music can be a great blessing in this life. The Bible is filled with exhortations to sing. In fact, Christianity has sometimes been called the singing faith because no other faith encourages music and singing like ours does. God himself is a creative God. I mean, just look around at what he's made. And he's made us with the desire to make music and to be creative and to enjoy creativity as well. It's a joyous thing. It's a happy thing. It's a wonderful thing. Music is a powerful blessing in this life. And in a world of pain and sin, we need to enjoy the blessings when we can and to revel in the beautiful things and in the happy things. So don't try to take that away from anyone. I defy anyone who wants to be like the Taliban, wagging their finger at people saying, you mustn't listen to any music, even the Christian stuff. It's all evil. It's all deception. It's all polluting. I say have fun with music. Enjoy it. Be creative. Enjoy the creative expression of others. Be happy in it. Take pleasure in it. I think the balanced place to reach and to land is just to sound this note of caution, saying there are pitfalls, though. The modern music industry has been much polluted, very much polluted. We need to walk with wisdom, separating out the good from the bad and the beneficial from the subversive, that which brings beauty from that which brings ugliness, that which brings us closer to God and that which pushes us further away. Make good choices, walk with wisdom. But that's the first thing. Don't hate all music. Music can be an amazing blessing and it's a gift from God and we should enjoy it and take pleasure in it. That kind of leads on to the second reaction that I would urge caution about, which is legalism in parenting teenagers around this issue and their music. So here's the thing, in spite of everything that I've said about the pitfalls of music and its potential for negative effects, and I completely stand behind everything that I've said, the truth is that I've seen more damage done to faith through fearful, even paranoid legalistic parenting than I have because a teenager listened to Sgt. Pepper or watched Star Wars. In the early stages of a child's life, you need to make their decisions on their behalf and in their best interest because they don't know. Small kids have no clue and you literally need to make every decision on their behalf and you need to shield them and protect them and that's just good parenting. So at that point, you decide what they listen to and what they see. That's great parenting. But as they grow up and they get into their teenage years, you need to start releasing responsibility to them to make their own choices in life. And if you keep trying to control them and keep them fitted to your mold, even as they try to blossom into their own person with their own individuality and character, they're gonna start feeling suppressed and feelings of rebellion are probably gonna start bubbling up. And as soon as they're free of your control and they move out, they're probably gonna rebel pretty hard after that. Therefore, as hard as it may be to see your teenager making really bad choices in the area of music, as you release responsibility to them, still try not to be too overbearing and controlling about it. Explain why you're against their choices as a Christian, try and guide them and give them wise counsel, live your faith with integrity in front of them, but as they get older, try and give them ultimate responsibility to choose for themselves because the truth is one day they're gonna have to make choices of their own as an adult when they move out and if you don't release managed responsibility to them as a teen while they're under your roof 
they're probably going to do crazy things with their freedom when they get it, when they move out as an adult. The teenagers that I know that were kind of overprotected and barred from secular music and TV shows and video games and movies, they really went crazy when they got their own independence and they moved out. They kind of went a bit nuts, to be honest. So that's the second thing I would say to avoid. Don't let fear drive you towards legalistic parenting. The final reaction that I'd urge caution against is just saying that none of this really matters and dismissing the whole thing. It's all just a storm in a teacup. I'm a Christian, but I'm gonna keep listening to and watching whatever I want. I'll watch and listen to everything because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. To that, I would say this. It's sometimes been said that while none of us remembers individual meals, they are ultimately forming us. If you put junk in, then your body will begin to deteriorate, but if you put good stuff in, it will improve your raw physical material. Well, it's a similar thing with the things that we watch and listen to as well, the things that we consume through our eyes and through our ears. We may not remember the individual songs that we've listened to and the things that we've watched over the years, but over time, those things nevertheless are forming us, shaping us for good or for bad. Remember the individuality experiments from earlier on in this series. The things that we are exposed to are influencing us, whether we realize it or not. Our thoughts, our behaviors, our emotions, they are affecting us. Either the stuff we consume can therefore help transform us and bring us closer to God, or alternatively, it can conform us to the image of the world and be detrimental to our lives. The Bible says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. So the point the Bible makes is do things that are not just permissible, but beneficial to your life. You're allowed to eat lots and lots of cake if you want, and yet you'll probably survive to tell the tale afterwards, but it won't be beneficial to your long-term bodily health. And likewise, yeah, you're allowed to listen to all kinds of different music and you'll live to tell the tale after that as well. But if you want good long-term spiritual health, emotional health, mental health, choose music, choose entertainment that will be beneficial to that. Choose music that brings you closer to God, that is glorifying to God. If you have the Holy Spirit within you and you want to see him reign within your heart and you want to see his power at work in your life, then don't put into your soul things that are antithetical to that and that blaspheme him and that undermine your faith in him. Listen to things that will be beneficial to that. Ultimately, it's your choice what you watch and listen to. And again, I don't intend to be the Taliban wagging my finger at people because of the choices that they're making. It's your decision at the end of the day. And yeah, a bit of cake isn't going to do you much harm and a bit of secular music isn't going to throw you off the narrow road either. But over time, the things that you consistently listen to and watch are forming you. And therefore, wouldn't you want to make consistently good choices that are forming you well and that are strengthening your faith and pointing you in the right direction? The truth be told, and this is my big confession, the big bombshell at the end of the series, if I'm listening to the radio and yesterday or Hey Jude comes on, I'm probably going to listen to it. There's nothing in those songs that would be harmful. But overall, it's about making consistently good decisions, being intentional, responding to your conscience and just being aware that these things do in fact influence us. In fact, maybe that's a good place to finish. If this series has done nothing else but make us think about these things for the first time and we're now more thoughtful and aware of these influences and if it causes us to make intentional decisions going forward about our entertainment, then it's been worthwhile. If we want to optimize our lives, don't ask what is permissible, ask what is beneficial and go do that. The rest and how you apply all of this information is ultimately up to you. Choose well and go well.